What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week, oh, hang on, we have more breaking news. New study says low carb is actually really better than calorie restriction, we give our take next. But first, make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment for the algorithm. So a new study from China got published in the British Medical Journal. Hey, I don't make the rules. And it was looking at either calorie restricted diet, a low carb diet, without calorie restriction, and I'll show you why I do air quotes here in a second, or a low carb diet plus calorie restriction. They were looking at people who had at least a BMI of I think 24. So not obese, but like approaching overweight uh, folks. They also were trying to basically equate calories. Now, it was a completely free living study, and we're gonna get into this. Now, it had a total of 150 subjects, and it was over 12 weeks. I don't really know why this study is getting so much play, because as far as randomized control trials go, it's I. The real problem is when you actually dig into the data, the calorie restricted diets were calorie equated, but the control diet, which was supposed to be non calorie restricted, was actually calorie restricted. Uh, there were 1,600 calories per day average in that diet, and there was about 1,500 calories a day in the low-carb diet, and in the calorie-restricted diet and the low-carb calorie-restricted diet, there was like 12 to 1,300 calories a day. At the end of the study, they showed the low-carb plus calorie-restricted diet produced more weight loss and more fat loss than the calorie-restricted diet, and the low-carb diet actually produced more weight loss than the calorie-restricted diet. How is this possible? Obviously it means calories don't count, dum dum. I'm just kidding. When you actually read the full text of the human randomized control trial, what you observe is something interesting. Now the study said the calorie restricted group was gonna be consuming about 20% of their calories from protein and the low carb calorie restricted group was gonna consume at least 24% of their calories from protein. Doesn't sound like much of a difference. Now what happens when we actually go into how much protein these folks were consuming. The low carb calorie restricted group was consuming almost double the amount of protein of the calorie restricted group. In fact, the calorie restricted group on average was consuming 25 to 30 grams of protein per day. They were frank deficient in protein. I don't know how this got past an IRB. 25 to 30 grams of protein per day. The RDA is 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So unless they were 40 kilos of body weight, they were deficient in protein. This study says nothing about low carb versus low fat. What this study is assessing is protein sufficient versus protein deficient. I don't really need to cover any more than that because this was so poorly thought out and poorly designed to have a group that, and quite frankly, I don't know how it got past an IRB. I don't know what IRB is like, mm, 1200 calories per day they're gonna target, and if they hit the protein requirement, they're, so actually the people didn't even hit the protein requirement, because like I said, it was like around 30 grams a day in the calorie restricted group. If you're eating 20% of 1200 calories per day, so 20% of 1,200 is 240. If we divide that by four, that's about 60 grams of protein a day. They didn't even get half that. So this is one of the problems with free living studies. And once again, when they took the dietary recall data and it showed this, they should have had a dietitian. I don't know if they did this, maybe they did, a dietitian intervene and be like, hey guys, you really need to be eating more protein. The only groups that consumed enough protein to even get close to the RDA were the low carb group. So it's not surprising to me that they might have retained more lean mass and lost more fat mass because we know the protein is thermogenic. But honestly, this is quite frankly such a mess. I don't know what to make of it. And it certainly isn't worth putting ahead of the 2018 meta-analysis by Kevin Hall of over 20 controlled feeding studies where they either had people in food jail, i.e. a metabolic ward, or supplied all the meals to participants and showed that between low carb and low fat, there is no difference in fat loss when you equate calories and protein. 
This study certainly hasn't done anything to change my mind. And once again, to the low-carb zealots, I would recommend reading the full text of the study, if you can read. Just kidding. Bye, guys.